the power of scripture. Many people read the scripture and they don't understand it. They say it doesn't make sense to them. They even say that it contradicts itself. And that's because you have to read the scripture with the author present. It's the only book where the author has to be present when you read the book in order for you to understand it. You have to read the word of God like it's a person and not just a book. Not just a physical book, but as something spiritual, a person, Jesus Christ. You have to read scripture like it's Jesus Christ. And inside Jesus is found the kingdom of God. And unless you read the scripture in such a way, you won't, you will miss everything. You see, a scripture is a spiritual thing. You need the Holy Spirit to be present, to open your eyes for the scriptures to open up for you. Without the Holy Spirit, the author being present, that scripture will not open up for you to give you the understanding, the knowledge to give you the revelation. So if the scripture remains closed, then you read and you don't understand. You read and it's not making sense. You read and you think it's contradicting itself, which is what a lot of people say. Because scripture, the word of God, the Bible is the only book where the author has to be present. The only way this is going to happen for the Holy Spirit to start opening this, the scriptures up for you is if you have an intimate relationship with the word, which is God himself. And you don't have the Bible on your bookshelf just collecting dust. You need to really get intimate. You need to build that relationship with God. You need to spend time. You need to be intimate. You need to study the word of God. Be intimate with the word of God meditate on the word of God it has to be like a romance thing it's not something where I just pick up my bible and I read a few verses just to get it ticked off my to, to crossed off my to-do list just so I can ease my own guilt no it needs to be genuine it needs to be a genuine attitude of the heart it needs to be a relationship with that very word it needs to be passionate and intimate to the point where I want to know, I want to know everything about you. You know, you need to read the scripture as though it's a person and not a book. You need to treat scripture as though it's a person and not a book. You need to treat scripture as though it's a romance and not a book. There needs to be that intimacy because it's a person, remember? Jesus Christ Jesus is the word of God and so have this intimacy with the scriptures I want to know because remember it's a person and not a book I want to know how he thinks I want to know how he feels I want to know his likes I want to know his dislikes you know when you fall in love with someone and you want to know everything about them and you want to spend all of your time with them and you want to know what they like, what they don't like, what their favorite color is, what they, you know, what they find funny and, they, you know, everything. What's their favorite food? What's your favorite number? What's your, you know, what's your favorite day of the week? And, and all of that stuff. And you just spend hours and hours and hours on end just talking, talking, talking before you know it. Ooh, it's the next day. And you're still there talking and your eyes are wide open. You're not even tired. You just want to know more. It's the same thing, you know, there needs to be this romance, there needs to be this intimacy. How, how, how does he think? How does he feel? What does he like? What does he dislike? How does he think about me? I mean, that's one thing we all, we all, that's one thing that crosses our minds when we fall in love with someone. How does he think about me? How does he feel about me? What did he say about me? You know, have this kind of intimate romantic relationship. How does he think about me? How does he think about my future? How does he want me to walk? How does he want me to be? You know, if you notice that we fall in love with someone, we start to change our hair in a way that they like it. We start to dress in a way that they like it. We start to talk in a way that they like. And it's exactly the same thing. Why would it be any different? I mean, we have to do so, but on a 
bigger scale? What does he think about me? What does he think about my future? How does he want me to walk? How does he want me to talk? And it's all found in that scripture, in the scriptures, right? Through the Holy Spirit, only through the Holy Spirit, the scriptures open up. So you can see what is really written. And what you will find is that the scriptures that the Holy Spirit has opened up leads you to a person. And his name is Jesus Christ, who is the word of God. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. This is found in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then a few verses later, it says, and the word became flesh. So what the Bible is saying is in the beginning was the word, the word of God. If you, if you remove the word and use Jesus instead, it translates to this. In the beginning was Jesus and Jesus was with God and Jesus was God and Jesus became flesh and walked among man. So the Holy Spirit when you start building this intimacy, the Holy Spirit will open up scriptures so you can see, see what? The person who is Jesus Christ himself, who is the word himself. Otherwise, if the Holy Spirit doesn't open up scriptures for you to see the person who is Jesus, who is the word himself, you'll be reading the scriptures, the word, but you're not understanding anything. All right. So the Holy Spirit will open up scripture who will lead you to the person who is Jesus, who leads you to God the Father. And that's how it works. Without the Holy Spirit, Scripture won't open up. And that's why many people read the Bible and they don't understand it. And they say it doesn't make sense. They say, but it contradicts itself. It's not true. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he said to them, you think by analytically scrolling through the scriptures, you will find eternal life. Because they were just scrolling, 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 scrolling through, trying to read, trying to read without having the love of God, thinking that, you know, they're going to understand anything, thinking that they're going to find eternal life. Let's go to John chapter 5, verses 39 through 42. Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees you said can you go away please he says you search the scriptures for in them you think you will find eternal life and these are they these scriptures are they that testify about me but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life people open the scriptures and they read them without wanting that relationship with Jesus Christ. They think, well, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I'm still good. I'm, I'm still reading the scriptures and they're, they're not understanding it. And then because it's <clears throat> from their understanding, from their strength and not the Holy Spirit, they don't understand, they don't understand, they don't understand until they just close the book and give up. Because they're not willing to get into that romantic relationship that intimate relationship that intimacy we have to treat the scripture as though it's a person and not a book because it's not a book it is a person it's the word of god and jesus is the word of god scripture is the word of god man who that manifest in physical form as jesus christ and now is printed is printed on paper but it's alive and active the word of god is alive and active so these pharisees and sadducees will read in the scriptures without the love of god without wanting this deep intimate relationship and jesus says you think you're going to find eternal life like that i am the life right many people open the bible and just start reading ah, i don't understand it but they don't want that dedication to jesus they don't want that relationship with jesus and, and, and they try to read the scriptures and it's not revealing it. Then the scriptures are not opening up for them. Because the only way the scriptures is going to open up for you is if the Holy Spirit opens it up for you. 
the Holy Spirit opens scriptures so you can understand the word, right? Look, let me hope you understand. So this is the word of God. So I open the Bible and I start reading. I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand. I need the Holy Spirit. So now let's say that I have the Holy Spirit, okay? And I open the scriptures to read. So now the Holy Spirit in me, that's why I said the author has to be present. The Holy Spirit now, as I'm reading scripture, starts to open scripture so I can understand the word. Otherwise, without the Holy Spirit, I'm reading the word, because the word, but I don't understand it. So the Holy Spirit now opens the word so I can open scripture so I can understand the word. Who is Jesus Christ himself? So the Holy Spirit in me is opening scriptures so I can understand Jesus Christ, right? And then what happens? And then Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus leads you to the Father. He takes you to um, uh, the realm of heaven, where it's you and the Father. Jesus takes you there because he says, I am the way. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one gets to the Father except through me. But who's going to testify of Jesus, the Holy Spirit? Jesus, sends, Jesus said, I send you the, the helper, the Holy Spirit, who will testify of me. So the Holy Spirit always leads you to Jesus. Jesus always leads you to the Father. So if you're holding the scriptures and expecting to understand anything without the Holy Spirit, you won't understand. It doesn't work that way. People read and they don't understand because they don't have this love of God. They don't have the love of God inside them, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's the Holy Spirit who opens scripture and releases revelation of who Jesus is. And the more you come to know who Jesus is, the more you take on his traits, his behaviours, his lifestyle. You start to become in his image. You start to walk like him. You start to think like him. And then G is Jesus who empowers you to enter heaven where God the Father is. As Jesus leads you to the Father. At the centre of Jesus' message was the kingdom of God. It was all about the Father, the Father, the Father. Only when you have this intimacy with God and you intimately know God can you reveal God to other people. Otherwise you will just be speaking God, God. You're not revealing God to anyone because you yourself don't know who God is. And so you say 100 words to a person and they're not changing because these words are coming from you. But if you have this deep revelation of good, who God is, you can reveal God to other people. So you just speak one word and that person becomes transformed. But you need to surrender. You need to you need to be dealing with this from your heart, from the spirit, not from your mind. We don't open the scriptures and try to have a, a mental understanding of it, although it's good to have that too. It needs to have it needs to be a spiritual understanding. So the Holy Spirit needs to open the scriptures for you to have a spiritual understanding of it. Why? Because it's a spiritual book. It's not a physical book. It's spiritual. Right? So we need to surrender, really dedicate. To God. Dedicate, surrender. It's a choice that we have to make. Choose this life of walking in spirit. Choose to dedicate. And if you choose not to, then stop complaining that scripture doesn't make sense and that you don't understand it. It's not for everyone who understands. It's for those who are ready and willing to step into that realm because when you open the scripture and you start reading from a place of dedication you will start entering another realm a spiritual realm and you will start to see things that nobody can see it's impossible to see without the Holy Spirit without Jesus Christ without God the Father the Trinity the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. With that being said, if this ministry is blessing you, be sure to bless back. Link is below. 
if you want to send the tithing books that i've published and written can be purchased below worldly life of deception this is grace spiritual warfare who is god new age of to jesus christ and i also make christian clothing again links are below god bless you peace be with you